Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to divide polynomials. We're also going to look at the remainder and factor theorems, which help us with polynomial division. Polynomial division works just like the division we've done with everyday numbers. You have a dividend and a divisor, and you end up with a quotient. Now, if the remainder is zero, then we find out that our divisor is actually a factor of our dividend. Or here, the divisor is actually a factor of our polynomial. You can still check your division of a polynomial the same way you would check division of our everyday numbers. Multiply that quotient and divisor and then add the remainder. Now, if f of x and d of x are polynomials and d of x is not the zero polynomial and the degree of d of x is less than or equal to the degree of f of x, then we can rewrite f of x, our dividend, here in terms of the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Seems a little tricky, but we're going to look at some examples and it should make a little more sense. First, we're going to use long division. So long division of a polynomial looks just like long division of our everyday numbers. The key thing is your polynomial has to be rewritten in descending order. So notice here we have our x squared before our x cubed. We need to rewrite that as 2x cubed minus 7x squared and then minus 65. Now, I left a space. I left a space because we don't have any plain linear x terms. We need to have a placeholder for that. So we're going to put 0x. Now that we have it in descending order, we can set up our long division. We have 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 0x minus 65. And we're dividing this by the binomial x minus 5. Now when we divide, we're concentrating on the first term of our binomial, our divisor, and the term that we have first for our dividend. So right now we're looking at the x and the 2x cubed. What does x need to be multiplied by to become 2x cubed? Well, that would be 2x squared. So we're going to do our work here on the left. 2x squared times x minus 5. That is 2x cubed minus 10x squared. So just like normal long division, we're going to write that product 2x cubed minus 10x squared. And remember, when you'd find the product of those two numbers, you would then subtract it. Well, we have to subtract both terms, so we have to subtract the first and then distribute the subtraction to the second, which becomes plus. You do that and you notice that the two x cubes simplify and cancel each other out. Our next term, negative 7x squared plus 10x squared, becomes positive 3x squared. And then we bring down the next term, plus 0x. Now we start all over. We look at the first term of our binomial, our divisor, and that's x. And we want to cancel out the 3x squared here in our dividend. So x times what gives us 3x squared? Well, that would be a plus 3x. Move over to the left and do that multiplication, 3x times x minus 5. You have 3x squared minus 15x. Write that product. Oops. We want to write 3x squared minus 15x. Remember, we have to subtract it. So subtract, and the subtraction becomes addition. The 3x squareds cancel each other out. 0x plus 15x becomes 15x, and we carry down that constant term of negative 65. Now we're looking at that first term of our divisor, the x. We have to multiply it by what to get 15x? 
we need to multiply by a positive 15. 15 times x minus 5 is 15x minus 75. We write that down here. Remember, we are subtracting these two terms, so subtract a positive 15x, subtract a negative 75, and that becomes a positive 75. We add the 15x's cancel out, negative 65 plus 75 is 10. Now we have a remainder here because there's no longer an x variable left. So we're going to add our remainder to the end. So we add and our remainder is 10 out of our divisor x minus five. So you just did long division on a polynomial, a polynomial divided by a linear binomial. Now, another simplified method of long division is called synthetic division. Synthetic division is just a shorthand method for this long, um, long division. And it can only be used for the special case of dividing by a linear factor with a leading coefficient of 1. So something that looks like x minus c. Well, we have that here. Notice that we're going to be dividing the same polynomial by the same binomial as we just did. So our first step is make sure that everything is in descending order. It is. We also want to make sure that we have any placeholders. So remember, we're missing that x term. So we want to do a plus 0x minus 65. So here is our polynomial that is our dividend. For synthetic division, you're going to just write the coefficients of each term. So you're going to have 2, negative 7, 0, and negative 65. Next, you draw a little box, and that's where you put your divisor. But our divisor here is the 0. So our divisor is x minus 5. Well, we want to find that as a 0. If it is a 0, then this would be true, and x would equal 5. So 5 is our divisor. We're going to draw our bar, and sometimes some people like to put a box at the end. This is where your remainder will end up. If you end up with a 0, that means that 5 is, in fact, a 0 of that polynomial. So let's look at doing synthetic division. First step is to carry down that first coefficient of 2 here. Now you multiply your divisor, 5, by the 2, which is 10. Now you add vertically. Negative 7 plus 10 is positive 3. Multiply that result, 3, by the divisor, 5, and you have 15. Add vertically, 0 plus 15 is 15. Multiply that result of 15 by the divisor of 5, 75. Add vertically, negative 65 plus 75 is 10. We have finished synthetic division. What we're left with is a polynomial and a remainder of 10. So if you remember, our first coefficient here was our x cubed. Then we had our x squared, our x, and then we had our constant. Everything shifts by one place for your, your uh, quotient here. So the 2 is our x squared place, 2x squared. The 3 is plus 3x. The 15 is now our constant, and our 10 is the remainder. Remember, it's 10 over our divisor of x minus 5. If you compare this to the result above, it's exactly the same. So I don't know about you, but I prefer synthetic division. It's a little bit cleaner for me. Now, we have this remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says that if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus c, 
then f of c is the remainder. So we're going to use the remainder theorem to determine if the given number c is a zero of the polynomial. I want to use synthetic division again. So first, I'm going to check that my polynomial is in fact in descending order, and it is. So I'm going to write each of the coefficients. So 1, 1, negative 6, negative 5, negative 15. And we want to see if c equals 5 is a 0 for us. That's what this remainder theorem is telling us. Is c a 0? So we're going to divide by 5. So remember, we draw our bar, and we can add that box at the bottom for our remainder. For c to be a 0, this box needs to end up with a 0. First step, you bring down that first coefficient, 1. Now you multiply. 5 times 1 is 5. Add vertically, we get 6. Then we multiply. 6 times 5 is 30. Add vertically, 24. 24 times 5, 120. Add vertically, 115. It's not looking good. 115 times 5 is 575. Add vertically, we get 560. That box is not zero, so c equals five is not a zero for h of x. Now let's look at the factor theorem, which is saying something very similar to the remainder theorem. It's saying that if f of x is a polynomial and f of c equals 0, then x minus c is a factor of f of x. So we want to know if x plus 1 here is a 0 of f of x. So what we're looking for is x plus 1 being equal to 0, being a 0, or x equals negative 1. So remember, we're going to divide by negative 1. Make sure that your polynomial is in descending order and that every term has a placeholder. They do. Write those coefficients. 2, 1, negative 37, negative 36. We are dividing by that 0, negative 1. Remember to draw your bar. And we want that box for our remainder. We want to see if we have a 0 or not. First step, bring that first coefficient down, which is 2. Multiply. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Add vertically, negative 1. Multiply. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Add vertically, negative 36. Multiply that negative 36 by negative 1. We get a positive 36. We're adding vertically, and we get a 0. So this is a big yes. x plus 1 is a factor, right? In order to be a factor, it has to be a 0. So we're going to use this to help us with example 5. Notice we have the exact same polynomial. We say it's given that negative 1 is a 0. We just verified that above, right? We divided by the 0 of negative 1, got a 0, so it's true that x plus 1 is a factor. So that means x plus 1 is a factor, and what we have left here, right, the quotient, is a polynomial that we're going to see if we can divide further. This remaining polynomial is 2x squared minus x minus 36. Now, we need to try to factor that remaining polynomial. So, let's see if we can factor it. Let's look at it separate. 2x squared minus x minus 36. With the AC method, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 72, but they need to add to negative 1. 
how about negative 9 and positive 8? That works. So 2x squared plus 8x minus 9x minus 36. Now we have four terms so we can factor with grouping. We have 2x times x plus 4. And then we have negative 9 times x plus 4. That factors to 2x minus 9 times x plus 4. So our fully factored form here is x plus 1 times 2x minus 9 times x plus 4. Now in step 6, we need to solve f of x equals 0. To do that, you use that zero product property. So x plus 1 equals 0, right? Each of these factors can be 0. 2x minus 9 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. Let's solve each of these. The first one, we get x equals negative 1 is a 0. Add 9 to both sides here. We have 2x equals 9. Divide by 2, and we get x equals 9 halves. And this last one, subtract negative 4, and we get x equals negative 4. So our zeros are going to be negative 1, negative 4, and 9 halves. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you will go check out some of my other math videos.